Welcome to the five day blues guitar challenge. This is just one lesson in a series where I'll teach you five different super fun blues progressions that will help you reboot your guitar practice. And if you want to learn the guitar practice method that has changed the lives of over 21,000 guitar players, you need to check out my online guitar reboot workshop to ensure you get the most out of your guitar practice. Just click the link here in the video or in the description. All right, let's get started. Today's 12 bar blues is called Shapeshifter because we're essentially using a single shape across the entire fretboard to achieve all the chords we need for a 12 bar blues in the key of A. And I love this because not only does the shape stay the same, what you're gonna do with your picking hand in terms of the fingers used is gonna stay the same as well. So it's one of those instances where once you get it and you break apart, okay, we've got a single shape that we're gonna move around and we've got a single pattern we're gonna use on our finger picking hand, it's actually much easier than it sounds. Now I've added a couple little extras here to just kind of give it some flash, but don't worry about that yet. What I wanna start with is just the finger picking pattern. I think a lot of times looking at tab and seeing notes all over the staff or numbers all over the tablature line starts to almost bring up some anxiety because it's like, holy smokes, what's actually happening here? Well, let's go ahead and break down the pattern. Uh, to learn the pattern, what I want you to do is just fret an A7 chord, meaning your ring finger will be on the second fret of the B string and your middle finger will be on the second fret of the D string. It's a nice solid A7 chord. One of my favorite flowery dissonant type chords. Now, in terms of what we're gonna be doing with our finger picking hand. Now we have this chord shape here on our, on our fretting hand. Leave that alone, don't move it at all right now because we're just focused on the thumb, index, and middle finger. So we're gonna start with a pinch, a three string pinch. The thumb's gonna rest on the A string, index on the G, and middle on the B. And for the first quarter note, you're just gonna pinch those three together. Easy as that, right? Then if we look at the next two notes, the thumb's gonna drop to the D string, index is gonna hit the G. So just practice that and I'll count along with it. So it's one, two, and. We'll do that one more time. One, two, and. You can also say it like pinch, thumb, index. After those two, our thumb's gonna actually hit the A string again. This time our middle is gonna hit the B string. Okay, so it's another one of those staggered pinches where it goes thumb and then index. Again, thumb on the A, middle finger on the B. So if we rewind and put it all together, we have pinch, thumb, index, thumb, middle. Okay, and if I was to count along with that, it would sound like this. One, two, and three, and. I'll do that just a touch slower. One, two and three and. And then to wrap it up, we're gonna pinch the D and the G string. And that's the last quarter note of the sequence. Now, you'll notice on the tablature, there's a little dot beneath the standard notation. And that's just an indication for a staccato, meaning you, you almost cut the notes sustain short. And I wanna say right now that this is, this is optional. This is completely secondary to learning the finger picking pattern. If you so choose to do that, great. It adds a nice little exclamation point to the end of the measure. However, it's not necessary, okay? It's something that if it's in your skill set to do, please do it. If it's something you wanna strive for, please do it. But if it's just hard enough to get the finger picking pattern right now, don't worry about it. You can leave the staccato part on the table for it the next time you get this or the next time you play this. So here's what we have for the finger picking pattern. And again, I'm just gonna uh, cite or rather announce which fingers are being activated. So we have uh, the first pinch, remember, is a three finger pinch, and the last pinch is a two finger pinch. So it sounds like this. It's pinch, thumb, index, thumb, middle, pinch. And if I was to add the staccato, it would be that last pinch would sound like this. All right, so with the staccato, And it's a great way to, to practice this, is just to kind of repeat that pattern over the A7 chord. Don't even worry about changing chords right now or adding anything extra. Just repeat that pattern. Just keep on repeating that. 
fact, those are the first four measures of your 12 bar blues that you're learning. Now, to complete the vibe of this particular uh, portion the, over the A chord here, what I want you to do is when you're comfortable with that finger picking pattern, integrate a little slide into the chord, okay? This doesn't even necessarily have a count, it's just more of an accent, okay? So all you're doing is starting one fret behind where you want to arrive. So we want to arrive at the second fret, we're gonna start at the first fret. Pretty crummy sounding chord by itself, right? Well, if you pinch those three strings and do a quick slide into the second fret, it has this really cool bluesy vibe, some mojo, if you will. We're infusing mojo to the A7 chord. In fact, we're gonna be infusing mojo to all the chords we're using on this particular progression. So again, with the pattern and the slide, it'll sound like this. Now that slide, yes, it's fancy, it adds a little bit of extra spice, but it does another crucial role, and that is it marks the one beat. So often when you're playing a 12 bar blues, you get into this kind of hypnotic state where all of a sudden you lose the downbeat, you, lo you lose the one. So it's like, oh, did I just start this measure or did I not just start this measure? I can't remember. Well, adding a slide or some little extra kind of dynamic to that one beat will allow you to keep track. So it not only helps you keep track of where you're at, where you're at, it actually helps you add a little bit of spice and again, infuse some mojo into the blues. Cool, so that's where we're at for the A, uh, the part over the A chord, right? We've got the finger picking pattern, we've got the chord. Well, now the beautiful thing is we just need to learn two other chord positions and we're good to go. So this next chord position uh, is an interesting one and I'm gonna show you a variation at the end that may make things a little bit easier for you. So for this next chord, what we're gonna do, I'll actually show it in its true location. Our ring finger is gonna be on the seventh fret of the D string, index finger fifth fret of the G, and pinky seventh fret of the B, right? This is actually kind of a modified D7 type chord. And we're gonna do the same exact finger picking pattern, same exact strings, same exact slide, same exact staccato, just over this chord shape. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna knock it down towards the headstock one fret, okay? And what we're gonna do is slide into that first position. The same three string pinch. Thumb drops to the D, index on the G, thumb back to the A, middle finger on the B, and then pinch the D and the G together. So that's over the D chord. We'll do that twice in a row. That's the first part of the second line of your tab. All right, so now we have two pieces of the puzzle. We just have a third one to deal with. And that third one is conveniently located two frets up from where you're at. So from this D7 chord type position, we're gonna move up two frets towards the body. Index finger ends up on the seventh fret of the G string, ring finger, the ninth of the D, and pinky finger, the ninth of the B. All right, so this is an E7 position. The only thing that's different here is that instead of our thumb being on the A string, our finger picking thumb, we're gonna move it to the low E because we want it to match the tone of the chord. Okay, if you hit the A string, it's not the end of the world. I'm just trying to be a little bit more official in announcing that, hey everybody, this is the E chord. So we're gonna execute the same exact pattern here over the E7 chord. Let me just break that down real quick. We're gonna start one fret behind our intended chord, slide up during that pinch, thumb drops to the D, index G, thumb back to the low E, middle B string, and then pinch the D and the G together. Right, so again, that'll sound like this. So those are all of the pieces. You have the part over the A7 chord, you have the part over the D7 chord, and then the E7 chord. So you'll play the A7 for four measures in a row, and that is the first line of the tab. For the second line of the tab, you'll do D7 for two measures, A7 for two measures. And then for the final line of the tab, E7 for a measure, D7 for a measure, and then A7 for two measures. And there you have it, a 12 bar blues with the same chord shape, which brings me to a variation I wanna share with you. Sometimes it's a little odd to go from this chord shape, the A7, to this chord shape. 
So what you can do to make things even easier and more shapeshifter, if you will, true to the name of the, the chord progression, is take your ring finger and pinky and use those for the A7. So now when it comes to shooting up the fretboard, those two fingers, it's almost like a train on the tracks. You keep those on those strings and you just slide up to your next chord position. And the same is true for the E7. So by kind of using those as your anchor point, you, you might mitigate some finger confusion. So just a little tip in case you're having a hard time with this, but take this one slow, really lock down the finger picking pattern first, and then start bringing in the chord transitions. I think you'll find much more success with that if you kind of parse it out. So best of luck to you with this one.